life has got to be like this. It's got to keep going on. Several things. I was in the drug business and I was in the oil business, but I'm not the one now. You understand? I have my own little business on the side, a sort of sideline. Happens to be a confidential sort of call, but you might make a nice bit of money. Benjamin Franklin's field, fold it just for the thrill. Go numb until I can't feel. All my pop just peel. Stock market just crash. Today we have two special guests, Mrs. Daisy Ken and Mrs. Myrtle Wilson. Before we air the interview, we would like to make something clear to our viewers. Here at New Money News, we aim to provide our audience with the full story, leaving no stone unturned. Because of this, we've decided to feature Myrtle Wilson during our interview with Mrs. Daisy Ken. We understand that Mrs. Wilson is no longer with us. However, we ask our audience to keep an open mind while listening to our interpretation of her. Have you two ever met before? No, I'm afraid I've never seen her. But I don't recall ever meeting Daisy. How would you both describe your husbands? My husband, George, originally pursued my sister for a long time before she rejected him. I decided to settle for him, seeing as my financial status couldn't get me the person I truly wanted to marry. Tom is a wonderful man. He always gives me and pay me whatever we need, besides emotional support. He's never quite there. Even on the day of Pammy's birth, he sprinted off into town, always coming back the next morning, acting a bit different. What do you think causes a shift in behavior? Well, I've always had the suspicion that Tom had another woman in New York. He's a great man, don't get me wrong, but when people of different backgrounds come up to me asking me why I hadn't shown to any of Tom's parties with his New York crowd, I started to worry. Is anything happening around the house that would cause Tom's stress? No, nothing that I know of. Myrtle, would you think that George had another woman if he would act like this? Oh, no. George is too sweet, too unlike me, to ever think about going to another woman. I'm the best he's got. From your past experience with Tom, Myrtle, would you agree with what they have been expecting? Wait, what past experience? Well, it began about a year and a half ago. Tom swung by the shop to fill up his coop, and of course my sluggish husband didn't bother to get up in a timely manner. So, I had to handle it. This was my first of many encounters with Tom. He would have George run silly errands just to be alone with me. He would give me money and instruct me to get on the next train into New York. My husband thought I was visiting my sister in the city. Never thought for a minute that I was partying in the suite of a plaza, drinking expensive alcohol and pine dogs worth more than his garage. I knew it! That sad excuse of a man. Myrtle, did you ever think of what you were doing to well, at first I did. Of course I did, but Tom kept telling me sad stories about his life at home, how his wife barely acknowledged him, and how she used him just for his title. I wanted to get divorced, but she kept him back because of her faith. Did you ever sit up to meet her and tell his wife what was going on? I never tried to meet her. I thought I saw her on the night of my death, but it turns out that Jordan Baker was sitting in the car, not his actual wife. Jordan Baker, a peculiar character. She knows Daisy from Louisville. She knows Myrtle from the garage. She knows Gatsby from Oxford. Do you think she knew of anything about the affair? Oh, I'd hope not. Jordan's one of my closest friends, and I just know that she would tell me of anything she heard of me. I'm sorry, Gatsby? Don't you know of Gatsby? I've heard his name whispered in cars heading in the East Egg direction on Saturday nights, but nothing more than whispers. I don't think I would know him if he didn't know his car. I'll get back to the car. Daisy, obviously you know Gatsby. Would you perhaps give us some insight as to what Gatsby's like? I can do a lot more than just plain insight. Gatsby and I have known each other for many years in a relationship with moments that I'm not particularly proud of. Care to elaborate? It's a long story, but it all started about five years ago at my home in Louisville. He was a soldier in the war, but it wasn't his military status that caught my eye. The way his eyes shone in the light and he smiled. His smile was the smile that every girl, every person wanted to be looked at with. Did you love him at the time? I loved him even when he went to war and I broke my promise to wait for him. I loved him when I married. I loved him when I, while I loved Tom. I still love him now and I think I always will. Why wouldn't you leave Tom for Gatsby? It seems like could have cleaned up the entire situation. 
Earl could have left George and married Tom, and you could be happy with the man you could. Tom influenced so many parts of my life, mainly my daughter. I realized that I had to protect her from the men like Tom, to teach her that you don't need to be a brute to be heard. As for Myrtle, I don't think Tom would have ever married her. He needs someone with money to secure his status as old money. That's why he didn't offer the option of divorce when he found out about my affair with Gatsby. What do you mean, Sonny? Well, Myrtle, I understand we've only just met. However, you do not seem like the type my husband would run around with, at least while I'm on his own. Us old money types, we're not the terrible types. We can afford to break things, get away with using people, and wake up the next day feeling as great as the day before. Even after getting away with vehicular manslaughter? Well, Myrtle, I'm sorry. That night was a lot. So many things happened before. There were so many voices telling me what to do, and I thought that driving would cool my nerves. I didn't think something like this would happen. I never thought for a second. Tell us what actually happened that night, baby. We've gone into town, this room in the plaza, one I'd never seen before. But my husband walked around the suite like he lived there more than his actual home. My cousin, Nikki, was the only reason why I hadn't just completely shut myself down that night. He had an understanding air to him that no matter what happened, he wouldn't judge me for it. And on that night, it seemed like everyone was out to get me. Jay and Tom fought the entire time over a matter they had completely no knowledge about. Who I loved, when I loved whom, if I ever loved them at all. Jordan sat in the corner, offered no help. I knew that she was only absorbing the drama so she could tell her next best friend. And I, nobody asked how I was. I just sat in the middle of the whirlwind of an argument, trying to calm them down, trying to understand what's going on. So you said you drove to calm your nerves? Yes, Jay thought it was a good idea too. Have you ever driven before? Not really, but I've been in the car while Jordan drove, so I took notes from her. Myrtle, do you know what happens next? A little too well, I'm afraid. Jamie, did you ever think to stop? Not even. Jay told me to keep going, and I did. It seems that the only clear-headed thinker you have in your life is that cousin of yours, Nick. Oh, Nicky, he's so innocent. He reminds me of Rose, an absolute Rose. Myrtle, do you know of this Nick? I believe Tom introduced us at the plaza. He probably wrote about that time at the plaza, knowing Nick. Ah, uh, yes. His new book is set to come out in April. It's a shame that he couldn't be here today. What with his busy life in Chicago? How do you feel about his upcoming novel? Oh, it'll be wonderful. He's truly a Yale man, and if his writing is anywhere near as brilliant as he is, I know it will be a novel for the ages. Thanks for stopping by, ladies. We'll see you all next week when I interview the renowned Oculus, Mr. TJ.